Thirst Silent Melody, Morley's Cove, a quaint coastal town, had always been a haven for those seeking solace from the hustle and bustle of city life. Nestled between rugged cliffs and the vast expanse of the sea, it was a place where secrets were whispered with the wind and tales of old echoed with the waves. Lydia Sinclair, a young and passionate music teacher, was the town's newest resident. Eager to leave behind a painful past, she saw Morley's Cove as a fresh start, a place to heal and rediscover her love for music. Upon her arrival, Lydia was captivated by an old Victorian house that sat overlooking the sea. Its grandeur, albeit faded by time, beckoned her. The townspeople, always curious about newcomers, greeted Lydia with warmth but their eyes held a hint of caution whenever they glanced towards her new abode. The house, they said, had been vacant for years, and many were surprised to see its lights on once again. As Lydia settled into her new life, she felt an inexplicable connection to the house. Its creaky wooden floors, the scent of old books, and the soft lullaby of the sea made her feel as if she had come home. But what she didn't know was that the house held a secret, one that was intertwined with the very essence of Morley's Cove. And as the days turned into nights, Lydia would soon find herself entangled in a mystery that had been silent for decades, waiting for the right melody to awaken it. The attic of the Victorian house was a realm of forgotten memories. Dust-covered trinkets, faded photographs, and old furniture lay scattered, each item a silent witness to bygone days. As Lydia rummaged through the remnants of the past, her fingers brushed against the cold, polished surface of an old piano. Hidden beneath layers of dust and draped in a moth-eaten cloth, the instrument seemed out of place amidst the attic's clutter. With a mixture of reverence and curiosity, Lydia unveiled the piano. Its ebony and ivory keys, though aged, gleamed with a timeless elegance. Unable to resist, she allowed her fingers to dance across the keys. The sound that emanated was hauntingly beautiful, each note echoing with a melancholy that tugged at her heartstrings. The music caught the attention of Alice Tremaine, the town's historian and keeper of its many secrets. She arrived at Lydia's doorstep with a face etched with concern. Over a cup of tea, Alice recounted the tale of Eliza Montgomery, the piano's previous owner. A talented pianist, Eliza was the talk of Morley's Cove until one fateful night when she vanished without a trace. The only remnant of her existence was the melancholic tune she last played on that very piano. Alice's words sent a chill down Lydia's spine. The instrument, which had brought her so much joy, now seemed to hold a shadow of mystery. The town had moved on, but the piano's melody, it seemed, still lingered, waiting for someone to decipher its enigmatic tune. And as Lydia would soon discover, some melodies once awakened, refused to be silenced. The nights in Morley's Cove were usually filled with the gentle sounds of the sea, but for Lydia, a new sound had begun to weave its way into the tapestry of the night. A soft, haunting piano melody seemed to drift from the attic, filling the corridors of the Victorian house with its melancholic tune. Each time Lydia would rush upstairs, the music would cease, leaving behind an eerie silence and an empty room. Samuel Dawson, a local fisherman with deep-set eyes and a rugged demeanor, began to visit Lydia more frequently. Over hushed conversations, he admitted that the same melody had haunted his nights. It was a tune his mother used to play, a lullaby that had been passed down through generations but was never shared outside the family. The two would sit for hours, trying to piece together the puzzle. Why was this song, deeply personal to Samuel, echoing through Lydia's home? The connection between the Dawson family and the old Victorian house was unclear, but the melody seemed to be the key. One evening, as the sun cast a golden hue over the sea, Lydia and Samuel sat by the piano. With a deep breath, Lydia began to play the tune, hoping to unlock the mystery. As the notes flowed, the atmosphere grew dense and a cold breeze swept through the room. The melody, though beautiful, carried with it a weight of sorrow and longing. The final note lingered in the air and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. The house, the piano, and the silent melody had bound Lydia and Samuel in a dance of the past, beckoning them to uncover a story that Morley's Cove had long tried to forget. The deeper Lydia and Samuel delved into the history of Morley's Cove, the more they realized that the town was shrouded in layers of secrets and half-told tales, 
At the heart of it all was the haunting melody that seemed to connect the dots of a forgotten narrative. Alice Tremaine, with her vast knowledge of the town's history, became their guide. She led them to the town's archives, a dimly lit room filled with old newspapers, journals, and records. Among these artifacts, they found a journal that once belonged to Eliza Montgomery. Its pages were filled with poetic entries, sketches of the sea and sheet music, but one entry stood out, a tale of forbidden love. Eliza had fallen in love with a man named Thomas, a sailor who often visited Morley's Cove. Their love was passionate but secret as Thomas was promised to another. Together they composed a song, a testament to their undying love. But the song was believed to be cursed, as anyone who played it experienced misfortune or disappeared altogether. The town, fearing the power of the melody, had tried to bury its existence. Families whispered warnings to their children, and over time, the song became a legend, its true origins blurred by fear and superstition. As Lydia and Samuel pieced together the story, they realized that the piano in Lydia's attic was the very instrument on which the song was first composed. And now, with its notes echoing once again, the town's secret was resurfacing, demanding to be acknowledged. The weight of the past pressed heavily on Morley's Cove, and it was up to Lydia and Samuel to confront the shadows and bring the truth to light. The days grew shorter, and the nights colder as Lydia became increasingly obsessed with the cursed melody. She felt an irresistible urge to play it, to confront its power and perhaps free the town from its haunting grip. Samuel, sensing the danger, pleaded with her to resist the allure, but the song's pull was too strong. One stormy evening, with the wind howling outside and the sea raging against the cliffs, Lydia sat down at the piano. Her fingers began to move, drawing out the forbidden notes. As she played, the atmosphere in the room grew thick with tension. The candles flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls, and the very house seemed to groan in protest. Samuel, hearing the first notes, rushed to the house. He burst into the room just as Lydia was reaching the song's climax. The storm outside mirrored the chaos within, with lightning illuminating the room in stark flashes. Desperate to stop the song and fearing for Lydia's safety, Samuel lunged towards the piano. Their hands met on the keys, producing a discordant sound that clashed with the melody. The room trembled, and for a moment, it felt as if the very fabric of reality was tearing apart. With a final resounding note, Lydia collapsed, the weight of the song's history and power overwhelming her. Samuel, breathless and drenched from the rain, cradled her in his arms, praying that he wasn't too late. The storm outside began to subside, but the echoes of the confrontation lingered. The cursed melody had been confronted, but at what cost? The fate of Lydia, Samuel, and the town of Morley's Cove hung in the balance, waiting for the dawn to reveal the aftermath. The morning sun broke through the storm clouds, casting a gentle light over Morley's Cove. The town, which had been gripped by fear and anticipation, slowly came to life, whispering about the events of the previous night. Lydia woke in the local hospital, her memories of the confrontation hazy. Samuel, his face etched with relief, sat by her side, holding her hand. As their eyes met, Lydia recalled a fleeting vision from the night before. Eliza and Thomas, standing together on a distant shore, their faces serene, nodding in gratitude. The piano, now recognized as both a symbol of love and a vessel of sorrow, was carefully removed from the Victorian house the town's council decided to place it in the local museum, alongside Eliza's journal, and a detailed account of the events. A clear warning was attached. The forbidden song must never be played again. The ordeal had left an indelible mark on Lydia and Samuel. However, instead of driving them apart, the shared experience drew them closer. They found solace in each other's company, and together they began to compose a new song, this melody, unlike its predecessor, was filled with hope, love, and the promise of new beginnings. Morley's Cove, having confronted its dark past, began to heal. The townspeople, once divided by fear and superstition, united to ensure that the lessons of the past were remembered and never repeated. As for Lydia and Samuel, they became the town's beacon of resilience and love. Their story and the melody they created served as a reminder that even in the face of darkness, love 
and hope can shine the brightest. Years had passed since the events that shook Morley's Cove. The town, once overshadowed by its haunting past, had flourished into a vibrant community, drawing visitors from afar with tales of its rich history and the love story that had changed its fate. The Victorian house, with its majestic facade, had been restored to its former glory. A young couple, Amelia and James Thornton, were its newest inhabitants. Drawn to the town by the legends, they were eager to start their life in a place filled with stories of love, mystery, and redemption. One crisp autumn afternoon while exploring the attic, Amelia stumbled upon a sheet of music, its edges yellowed with age. The title read, The Silent Melody. Intrigued, she brought it downstairs, where James, an amateur pianist, sat waiting. With a curious glance, he began to play the first few notes. The melody, though familiar, carried with it a sense of nostalgia and longing. The couple, unaware of its history, felt a deep connection to the tune. Outside, the old townspeople exchanged knowing glances, feeling the weight of the past once again. But this time, there was no fear. The melody, once a symbol of sorrow, had been transformed by Lydia and Samuel's love story into a testament of hope. As the notes of the silent melody drifted through Morley's Cove, they served as a reminder that stories, no matter how dark, can be rewritten. And in the dance of love and fate, every ending can be a new beginning. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Write in the comments what you think about this story.